should you build your own ass? Let's find out what the test results say at the end of the video. Hello guys, this is Rob with Tech bringing you my DIY attempt at building my own ass. At one point this motherboard that you're looking at was from a Dell Inspiron 5423 that I took apart since the screen was broken. I decided to set it on a wooden board instead and repurpose it for a NAS. It has an i3-3217U CPU. For storage drive I pick up two 6TB Seagates from eBay for $140 including shipping for both. For Open Media Vault, I went with a 256GB Patreon SSD from Amazon for 15 and for the RAM, I got two crucial 8GB DDR3600 MHz from eBay for 26 This is me showing you the old RAM that will be replaced. Now I have the new crucial RAM all installed. Decided to replace the thermal paste as I was already changing the RAM. Here I installed the cooler back, everything looks all good. Added the SSD where I was going to be installing open media vault might not look pretty but it's our DIY NAS solution for the hard drive dock I went with the Sabrian EC HD2B as this was the only one that I found that supported smart data and also passed serial information for drives via USB got it on eBay for 30 finally decided to add a little support to the drives total cost of the build came out to be 211 not including the laptop board as it was given to me so I ended up installing Open Media Vault. I had created a, a poll on uh, YouTube and everybody, well, the majority vote was for Open Media Vault. So this is what I have. Uh, um, I have everything set up right now, or at least what I was we, been working with. Um, so now we have uh, 16 gigs of memory, how I had mentioned. This is pretty much on the idle states of 3% load. Now for the drives, if we look at the storage, we go to disk, we can see that I have the Patriot, which is a 256 gigabyte, and then I have the two Seagates, six terabytes. Uh, for the file system, I went ahead and used XFS. It's, uh, I've been testing XFS compared to XT4. I mean, I haven't really seen a difference compared to the the two is just that they say or according to research that i've been looking at uh, say xfs is faster with uh, dealing with small files because it's like multi-threaded uh, but i really haven't noticed a difference now for my shared folder has a very basic configuration so um, on one of the drives i created the data folder and i created the docker folder and the home folder so I'm, I'm the only share that I have right now available is the data. Now Docker, if you see it, app data and compose is going to be used for Docker, but app data is within the Docker folder and compose is within the Docker. I mean, you don't have to set up like this. It's just the way that I want to set it up because for me to back up the Docker folder is easier. And I know that I have the app data and all those auto compose files or the compose files that we create. Um, we go to services and we look at the smb shares that's the only share that i have right now i went ahead and created a user for to access this directory so we go to users and you go to users i created this robert account and i gave it root sudo and users and the reason that i did this is because i wanted to disable the root user so root user will no longer i, I went ahead and disabled the root here you go to settings um, I think it's on services, SSH, and you can just remove the permit to root login. Uh, so that's why I did that. I've also been testing the public key authentication. Uh, when I get it finalized, I'm going to go ahead and remove the password authentication. I'll be very careful with this because if you do turn off this without setting up anything and you click save, you're going to lose access to your server. Uh, so just test. Uh, you guys want more explanation on this i could create another video in more detail the other thing that i did is i went ahead on system and workbench i changed the auto logout from five minutes to 30 minutes uh, i also changed the connection to ssl um, which is just whenever you type the ip address is going to use https instead of http but you also need to create a certificate so in a nutshell, to create a certificate, you go here in the certificates, you go to SSL, you do create, and here you can choose how long do you want your cert to be. So I just used five years, I think that's a good time, I just took my country. After you create the certification, you apply the changes, you're going to go back to 
workbench and you're gonna tie it in here for it to work now i was gonna create a raid one with those two drives and i had two options here i could have done the zfs uh, raid one pool or mirror pool or i could have done the M md raid now the reason i decided not to do raid one is because i was thinking whenever you have a mirror if something goes wrong you delete a file you or the or one of the drive gets corrupted since it's a mirror it's just gonna mirror across so i decided to instead use rsync and just have a weekly sync job that that copies the data from the drive one to drive two now when i look at that if uh, we go here on schedule task i went ahead and created manually i know there's a section here on services for rsync but the reason I did it like this is just I only have uh, one single command to copy the whole hard drive. So we have rsync dash av. A is uh, includes a lot of uh, multiple parameters, and v is for verbos. If you were to run it, it'll give you the the files that are copying over. So here I linked my source disk. This would be my my main disk, the one that I've been my network share is attached to. Now this is my spare disk, which is the other six terabyte drive. And I set it up to an hour 22, which is like 11 p.m. on Sundays. It'll run under the root user. Now, this other one is almost the same thing, but it has the delete flag. Now, what happens is like if you delete something on your main disk, it does not gonna get it's not gonna get deleted on the secondary disk because I stuck with it. I have it set up on the other command. So let's say a month goes by and, and I know that I want to get my files back. I mean, not get them back, like purge out the files. I know that everything that I have on disk one is good. I could run manually. If you look, it's not enabled. I could just click it, click run manually. And this would go in and delete anything that does not is not equal to disk one. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense. So you have file uh, file one on disk one and it gets copied to file one gets copied to disk two and then you can delete file one from the main disk and then it it'll file one will stay in the secondary disk until i run this command that it will compare and notice that it doesn't have the file on this one which is a source i'll go ahead and, and purge out that data now i know you guys have been waiting for like uh what are the speeds for this right so right now i'm connected uh, uh via ethernet a one gigabit uh, network uplink so i'm just going to copy this iso that i have here uh before i do that let me change to the dashboard so you guys can see the the cpu utilization and the memory um all right so here i have my chair and i'm just going to go ahead and copy a 10 gigabit or 9 gigabit uh, iso file and here it is we're doing 115, 113 megabits per second. That's pretty much maxing out my connection, my gigabit connection. Uh, I am going to get a two and a half gigabit NIC and see if I could go any faster than that. But uh, but this is this is a performance for this NAS. I mean, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So I have the, the six terabyte space. Um, I don't know, guys. Uh, do you guys have any other video suggestions? Let me know. If you guys want to know more about RAID 1 and RAID 5 or MD RAID, ZFS RAIDs, let me know. And I could create a virtual box and add some drives and create videos regarding that. Um, for now, if you guys like the video, leave a like or subscribe.